On Trials and Temptations by Elder Ephraim of Arizona from the book Councils from the Holy Mountain. God allows temptations so that they might rouse us to remember Him. When we call upon Him, He acts as though He does not hear us, so that we multiply our supplications and cry out His holy name in fear of the various passions. Then, through the pain of the entreaties, our heart is sanctified, and through experience we learn the weakness of our lame nature. And thus we realize in practice that without God's help, we are not able to do anything. This deep experience is acquired with the blood of the heart and remains indelible. It becomes a foundation for the remainder of one's life. The grace of God leaves and comes again, but experience never leaves, because it has been branded within the heart. And no matter how much Satan praises the heart, it points to what is indelibly written within its depths, that without God it is impossible to do anything. If there were no temptations, then pride and other passions would have turned us into other Lucifers. But our good Father, God, allows afflictions to come upon us so that we may be guarded by humility, which will lighten the burden of our sins. When we are still in our youth, we must be tempted, for youth is easily derailed. In time the war will cease, and the desired peace will come. Just have courage and patience. Do not despair, no matter how much the passions may fight you. God loves one who is fought against and fights back. Be brave and pray also for me, the indolent, the unclean, the unworthy, the abomination. If a trial benefited the Apostle Paul, as he said, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to torment me, lest I be exalted above measure. How much more will trials benefit us when we bear them patiently? The Apostle Paul was a chosen vessel, the mouth of Christ, dead to the world, one in whom the whole Holy Trinity dwelt. And even though the trial hindered his apostolic preaching, and even though he entreated God so much to take away the trial, God, looking after the benefit of his soul, did not fulfill his prayer, although he besought him three times, But he received the answer, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace, he said to him, is sufficient for your consolation. You will have this trial in order to benefit by acquiring more humility. Therefore, my children, bear with joy whatever trial God sends you, whether it be grief or ferocity of the passions, for God sends them to us for our benefit in order that patience in all these things may be considered as asceticism, which we are otherwise unable to do. So thank God, glorify Him with your mouth and heart, because the consolation of grace will come after the trial when we bear it with patience and thanksgiving. Is there anyone who has entered paradise by a different path, a path without temptations, whom we can imitate? No. All the saints pass through fire and water, through various temptations and afflictions, and they glorified God with their patience and received crowns of eternal glory. Do not lose courage in the struggle. Our Christ is invisibly standing by, observing the struggle of each one of us. Therefore, struggle patiently. Call out the name of our Jesus, so that it may be implanted within your hearts and so that you may become rich in the grace of God. Struggle to acquire a pure intellect so that you may feel the grace of the holy resurrection. Two kinds of grace are acquired when struggling according to God. One is the comfort of the Holy Spirit, who fills the soul with joy, peace, delight, etc. The other is called experience of temptations. This grace of experience is indelibly imprinted upon the soul, that is, it does not leave a person because it is united with the heart which experienced the temptations. Whereas the first, the grace of the Holy Spirit, sometimes comes and sometimes goes. In a time of temptations, the second grace, experience, is more beneficial because it enlightens the soul how to pass through them. Since experience comes from temptations, 
It knows how to free the soul from danger whenever it comes. So temptations, when we bear them with patience, bestow upon us the wisdom of temptations, and thus we become true philosophers. If we do not humble ourselves, instruction through temptations is not going to cease. Egotism creates temptations, but temptations in turn subdue the ego. Therefore be humble, my child, if you want the demons who oppress you to be humbled. Throw yourself beneath all and say, I am the worst person in the world and everything is my fault. Struggle, my children, struggle. No matter how much the enemy fights against you, take courage and we shall overcome him. We have our Christ, the commander-in-chief, who said, I have overcome the world. We too will overcome it. Just do not lose hope. God will not overlook the supplication of anyone who has hope and calls upon him if he prays humbly. Humble yourselves. Do not think highly of yourselves, and you will attain lofty things. The more gold is tried in the fire, the purer it becomes. And the more a Christian is tried by temptations, the more his soul is purified. The more deeply we plow the earth and the more often we prune and look after the vine, the sweeter and more abundant will the fruit be. The more deeply and frequently afflictions and temptations plow the heart of a Christian, the more pure and fruitful he will become. Therefore have courage, hope, and patience to receive the crown of glory. Temptations and afflictions will save us, whereas whoever flees from afflictions should not expect joyful things to come. Do not grieve for what has happened. May his will be done always, and let us say, may it be blessed. I pray that you acquire monastic forcefulness. All people suffer. We are blessed, because for the sake of Christ we show patience in temptations. For the monk who endures them patiently, temptations will cause an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. We owe thousands of thanks to the sweetest Heavenly Father, who providentially allows painful events to occur in our lives, so that we will not find ourselves in the other world incapable of showing that we endured something for the sake of His love. Courage, my children. Do not fall to your knees on your way uphill. We shall ascend little by little because we are weak. All will pass and be forgotten on the never-ending day of the glorious common resurrection. You wrote me about your temptations, my child, but it is clear that whoever wants to walk the road of God, the road of purification, sanctification, and dispassion, must first consider the necessary commitment he will shoulder. That is, he must be prepared to encounter temptations regardless of their origin, and to be powerfully forged in the virtue of humility. We are full of egotism, my good child, and since we are ill with this great illness of irrational egotism, naturally it follows that we undergo a painful treatment, that is, temptations, for several years until we learn humility in practice. The Lord of glory wore humility. It is a God-adorning virtue. However, my good child, it is acquired with the blood of the heart. May it be blessed. Forgive me. I do not know. Whatever you want. These are the words of a humble monk, a clear sign of progress. Concerning the matter of the brother who afflicts you, you must be patient. Be tolerant. Overlook his faults. Be philosophical about it, and reproach yourself for being more ill spiritually in other ways and not having been tested yet, and therefore it is improper for you to speak. The grief which you wrote about, my child, is clearly from the devil, because one who has confessed his sins must believe that they are entirely forgiven, and all grief must be banished without delay. So he must rejoice that God pitied him and enlightened him to wash his dirty garment by means of a frank confession, and should have good hope for the salvation of his soul. This untimely grief has destroyed many, therefore do not grieve at all. Rejoice, and again I shall say, rejoice. Every time a person falls, my child, he must arise, 
and he will be saved. When someone falls and voluntarily does not get up, this is from the demons. Despair is a demonic weapon which has broken down many. Hope, however, has saved many from the filthy pit of mire. Satan leads us astray, and me first of all, because we do not show patience, and thus we lose the profit of each temptation. There was a monk who entreated God to deliver him from the passions, so God took the passions away from him and gave him dispassion. Then he went to an experienced Abba and said to him, Yerunda, I have found rest from the passions and am at peace. He was still young. Listen, my child, said the great elder to him. Go and entreat God to bring the passions back to you, for man profits not in dispassion but in warfare, because dispassion is not labor but rest. In temptations a person is perfected and becomes spiritual, whereas without temptations he remains unwise, uneducated, and useless. Therefore be patient, no matter what fights you. In these end times that we are living in, let us not expect anything other than temptations, and they will save us. The darkness which you have, my child, comes both from nature and from the tempter. Both are healed by the arrival of God's grace. For this reason, entreat God to give you sobriety and the ability to remember good things and forget bad things. When you persist, little by little the grace of God will help you. My blessed child, I pray that the Lord of glory will give you the finest spiritual gift for your soul, so that your heart leaps from the divine joy and peace. As for temptations, they are inevitable, and we must realize that they are not about to subside, so we must always be ready to show patience. In any case, the wages of the one who patiently bears the infirmities of the weak will be great, for he will have suffered much, and it is very just that he be rewarded proportionately. I pray that you will become as strong as granite, on which all the billows of temptation will break, and that you will remain unshakable in faith towards God. Be patient, my child, be patient. It is for us to acquire humility that we are allowed to be tempted. These are medicines which cure our sick souls. Rejoice that God is caring for your wounds. Bless him that he considers you his child and disciplines you in order to teach you wisdom from his law. Blessed is the one whom you discipline and teach. And what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, then you are illegitimate and not sons. But our temptations testify that we are children of God and this is cause for much joy and honor. So take courage, my child. Wait patiently for the Lord, and do good. My child, we must understand that we shall pass through this present life with many and various temptations. We shall often water every step of our life with bitter tears and sighs. It is in this way that the all-wise God wanted man to live. But even he himself did not escape this law since the whole life of our Christ was a life of afflictions and trials. Who among men can demand to escape fulfilling this common law? No one. Therefore let us be brave, fighting valiantly in each oppressive adversity of this life, until the divine command calls us to abandon the present things and depart to the eternal dwellings. Sometimes a person seeks the will of God or to be delivered from some passion, and God allows some predicament to befall us, which will bring the desired result. But at first sight the thing seems arduous, and he thinks that it is a temptation due to his carelessness. Yet when the benefit ensuing from the predicament or the temptation is revealed, it is seen clearly that hidden within it was God's will or the deliverance from the passion from which he had begged God. Thus we learn that in each temptation, we need patience and forbearance in order to ascertain what is hidden within it once it passes. Many times a temptation happens which, at first glance, does not seem to conceal anything salvific within it. Yet afterwards, we see that within it is eternal life. 
Just as night succeeds day, winter eventually succeeds summer, spring succeeds winter, and so on. Similarly, one spiritual state succeeds another. Today, for example, I am in a good state in terms of purity of thoughts, and my soul glides like a dolphin in a tranquil sea. Everything is peaceful, and you think that it will continue like this forever. But the road which the wisdom of God has mapped out does not change its course. And behold, in a corner of the sky, little clouds, simple, unhealthy ideas, arise in the horizon and gather in the sky, in the mind. Soon afterwards, the wind begins, thunder follows, the sea becomes rough, and before long a tempest of thoughts is formed. Thus, a state of bitter thoughts succeeds the purity, and various disturbances follow the calm. If those who fear God lack the various trials and temptations, some of us would have ended up in satanic pride, others in debauchery worse than Sodom, others in the darkness of unbelief and impiety, and so forth. So then, it is to afflictions that we owe this little piety of ours, as well as our hope of salvation. One who is physically ill abhors the bitter medicines and painful operations. However, he endures patiently, knowing that the physician affects his health through these things. And when he gets well, he renders many thanks to the physician for the good which he did, and no longer remembers the pain because it has passed. We should also understand spiritual matters in the same way. All the various afflictions make the one afflicted abhor them, but they result in the cure of the soul's spiritual members. And if those afflictions had not been sent by God, the great physician, that sickly member of the soul would have constantly grown worse, and then the soul would have been poisoned and suffered spiritual death, which is separation from God. Therefore we ought to thank God in every situation so that we do not fall away from piety. The Apostle James teaches us beautifully concerning this matter. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Temptations attest to the inner state of each person. When many kinds of storms appear, it is then that the nautical experience of the captain shows, and godly afflictions reveal who the Christian is. Take away temptations and no one would be saved. This does not mean, however, that we should lead ourselves into temptation on purpose. But as we struggle according to God and look out for ourselves, we shall encounter temptations coming from His fatherly endearment, from the demon's envy, from our carelessness and inexperience, from the cunning of men, etc. But the goal is one to struggle with patience and perseverance, reflecting that nothing happens without the will of God. Therefore, we need patience and gratitude. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, of Elder Ephraim of Arizona, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us. Amen.